Hello, oh, welcome back to the tutorial. In the last episode, we added a life bar to the kind of HUD area that we're going to design today. Um, we added it so that when the player gets hit, instead of dying and respawning immediately, he loses one heart. If he loses three hearts, then he dies and respawns. Um, in this episode, we're going to add a HUD element. So we're going to fancy up the top of the screen a little bit because at the moment it's just three zeros um, and some hearts and I don't like it. Uh, I'm sure you don't like it. Um, we are going to do all the graphics for the for the ground. These aren't going to be the actual ground tiles that we're going to be working on. These are just the collisions that we're kind of colliding with. So all of that's going to be done in future episodes but today let's do the herd. So we're on the HUD layer. Remember the HUD layer is parallax 00, zero so it doesn't move. It sits there on top of the viewport all the way through the game. And it's also a global layer. So and, and I'll show you this in, in when we design level two. If we just put this layer on level two, it'll automatically bring through everything that we design in layer one, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's stop rambling. Let's just crack on. So double click. For the background of the HUD, I'm going to use a tiled background and click anywhere in the screen. I'm going to do 16 by 16, 0. zoom in a little bit. So for this first background bit, I'm going to make it pretty simple. Uh, let's just go black and then let's go into the gray browns and let's just draw a line. No, I'm not going to draw a line at the top because it's going to tile downwards and across ways. So what I might do is make it a little bit fancy and draw a square. That is the fanciest square I've ever seen. Oh. And then I'm going to make it twice as fancy by putting another square. What's fancier than one square? Two squares. What's fancier than two? Three. I love it. I love it so much. Close that down and that is our background. Doesn't that look quite lovely? Let's put it there. It's on the HUD layer. Right click it. Go to Z order. Send it to the bottom. Uh, already I'm starting to like that. Um, I've gone three tiles down. I may play around with that. I don't know. Well, I, well, I'll see what it looks like when it's in game. Um, these zeros now. Highlight them. Select them all. Change the color. Change it white. And let's put... What's this one? This is the score. Let's move that over there for the time being. We're going to move the hearts up into the middle. And then we're going to drop the background hearts just underneath them. So that's pretty obvious that that's the player's life. At the end of the life, we've got bombs. Okay, I don't think I want to display the bombs as a number. I think I'm going to do an image for that. Text score. And what have we got over there? Time. Uh, I think I'm going to put the time next to the hearts. So I'm going to go down to the properties panel here and I'm going to left justify it. Um, I want it to be in the middle of those two and the reason it's not is because the grid is set to 16 by 16. If we just change that to 8 by 8 I can now move that nice and in line with that. I'm happy with that and then over here the score. So what I want to do with the score, I think I'll put that on the right hand side. I don't want it to just be a number anymore. I want to go into the event sheet under initialize under every tick. I want to set the score, double click on this one to say score, but I want it to also say something else. So in quotation marks, I want it to say score, colon, space, closing brackets, and then the ampersand, the and symbol. So I wanted to say the word score, then leave a gap, and then write the actual score. So now when I go to the layer, yeah, and it's really just the coin count at the moment, and then I've got the time ticking down. That's a little bit too big. It's taking up too much of the screen. I'm going to make it less. Let's click on it, drag it up now because we've set the uh, grid to 8 by 8 that means we can move this up in the middle which I like 
and that, which I like. And also, I think the numbers here are too big at 12. I'm going to bring that down to 8. I'm going to bring that down to 8. Let's try that again. That's a little better. I'm probably going to bring in a different font um, at the end. I need a way to tally up those bombs as well. This is cool. I can drop it on the edge and it rolls. Oh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, although, because the background of the HUD is quite dark, I think I'm going to make the background of the hearts white. So let's double click in the background ones. Let's go white. Click on the paint bucket tool, take flood fill off. That'll color all the blacks all in one go. Close that down. And then go into the hearts, keep it on white, keep flood fill off. Put in white and then pop that on top. Take another look. Let's get hit. Hit me. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. Um, although I feel that they're still a little bit too big. I want to try them a little smaller. So if you click on, let's click on the background ones. Let's go to size. Um, uh, can I do it through X scale? Yeah, it's just, it's not going to because they're tile backgrounds. I'm going to have to draw them again if I want to make them smaller. I don't know. Let's leave them as they are for now. That's a little bit of extra work. Right, what we need to do is create um, an icon now that's going to represent how many bombs we have. So we're going to do that with a sprite. So double click, select sprite, click anywhere. Now the bombs are 16 by 16. So the frame is going to need to be 32 by 32. That's just how it is. We know that we want a white background, uh, a white border. So let's put that on. I might double this border size up to make it two pixels. Just think that's going to stand out a little bit better. Let's color in the background black. And I want to take that same color, just double click out of there. That, um, that's okay. <clears throat> or do I want it? No, I think I want it to be a little, I want it to sit inside of the, uh, the border. Oh. Bear with me. I know what I'm doing. I need that brown. Go back into here. Got the same brown. Um, let's take off this border here and this one. I wanted to sit inside the HUD um, area, which is obviously 32. So I need to have a natural border around this. We go to crop. Just resize it. Um, what did I have? 32. Um, Let's just take it down to 28 by 28. That's better. Now I can put the white border in. So keep, I don't want to lose that brown. So I'm going to click on the black, drag that over to white. Then I'm going to put the border on here. And then I'm going to put the second border in around it. I think it's just going to sit inside the HUD. A little better. Now I want this brown back and I want to just replicate the um, the same style that we've got on the HUD just by going around once and then I'm going to pop that in there and if I take a look yeah I quite like that that's quite nice there's like a nice little area now although I, I think maybe just one I think it's too thick too it's what we call trial and error um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the outside off. And then take another look. Yeah, that's better. What do you think? Do you agree? I think that's better. Uh, right, now we need to stick a bomb in there. We need a bomb, a bomb, bomb, bomb. We've got the bomb that we pick up, and we've got the bomb that explodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make it as an icon. I'm going to clone that object, I'm going to put another one up here, and I'm going to call this bomb 
icon. And that's the icon that's going to sit in the middle of there. Now, what I want to do, like we did with the hearts, is I want to change the outside to white and pop it back in the middle there. So I'm just keeping opening up this because I want to just see how it looks. I don't even think I want it to pulse there. I think that just needs to sit. It's obviously because we cloned that object, it's cloned all of the behaviors with it. So just open up the behaviors tab on the left, take off the sign behavior, and then it will just sit in there nicely. That's great. I like that. But what I want it to do is I want it to be faded out. So if we don't have any bombs, it's just going to be a, a faded out image. So we're going to set the default opacity to 50% maybe even less, maybe 30. Yeah, 30%. 30 so it's an indication of that there could be bombs there. Now, we're, we're going to need a number, I think, um, to track that, because I don't think I want to go with the idea of having a separate bomb every time we pick it up, unless we put them in really small and another row under there. But I kind of like this box. I want to have like a little number just at the bottom here, maybe another box that we can overlay, similar style, with just a number in it that just tallies how many bombs we've got, because we've already got that text set up anyway, which is here. So if I just knock that down by 50% to six, and I want to go into the properties panel here and just justify it to the center on the vertical and the horizontal alignment, then we can just drag that down. I don't envision us ever getting, you know, hundreds of bombs, but I do want to give it a little bit of a space to, for the number to grow. I'm going to send it to the top of the layer um, I don't think I'm going to put it there. I'm going to create another little one of these actually um, with the exact same color scheme. So I'm going to double click. I'm going to create another sprite. And I know we need to name these if you've already spotted that. Uh, let's resize this down. Just 12 by 12. Zoom in. Let's get a line around the outside. And then on the inside, let's just go with the brown for now. Um, right click if it's behind. It's all on the HUD layer, remember. Right click, Z order, center top. Pop that in there. Yeah, it's not going to be fully centered because the size of the box is 12 and the grid is an 8 by 8. So it's got to be multiple of 8 for that to work. So what I'm going to do is go into, oh, get rid of the number. Double click back in here. Um, I'm going to make it 10 by 10. I know that's not a multiple of 8, but bear with me while I just figure this out. Let's put another border around it. That's not the right thing to do. A border there. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can turn grid snapping off and just nudge that down, which I think I might do. Just want to get that in the right position. In fact, yeah, I'm going to go um, grid snap the grid off. If you click it, then you can use the arrow keys to nudge it a pixel at a time. I'm going to try it up here. Maybe right to the top. Bring that over. Using the arrow keys. Um, and then we can just pop that straight in the middle there. Um, let's see. I don't think I like the brown in the background. I think that needs to be black. I'm being so picky. Go back to the brown. Let's just put, just to keep it consistent. Put that there. And then pop that. Can I bring the size down to four? Perhaps. Okay, let's take a look. Let's collect some bombs. Let's see what it looks like. I get so picky with these things. One, two. What do you think? Should we leave it? Does it look good? Hmm. I don't know. Um, I'm a, I'm a, am I okay with it? Mm. Or do we need to 
rid of that. Does it need to go just next to it? Let's use the arrow keys, nudge it over and down. I think that's probably going to be better. Let me just turn snap to grid back on while I get this. Oh, snap to grid on while we get this aligned better. Now I can turn it off, click it and arrow key it. There. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that, I think. Um, although this brown border goes right up to the white, so I'm going to do the same thing on here. Um, I'm going to get this and I'm going to do that. Just to keep it consistent, I think I was trying to be a bit too arty with it, which is never a good thing. Sometimes just keep it simple. Keep it simple, Simon. There. Yes. That's better. Why didn't I do that to begin with? Um, okay, great. Now what we need to do now is make this go from 30% uh, opacity to 100% opacity if this number is greater than zero. So let's do that now. Back into the event sheet. Um, on start of layout, we need to make sure, oh, we need to name these things. Sprite 2, let's call this SPR underscore bomb frame. Move that down. And let's call this SPR underscore bomb count frame. What great num what great names we've given those. Okay, and we already call that text bomb. Um, and then this we call it sprite bomb icon. Okay, so a few things to remember. Um, right back into the event sheet. So on the start of layout, we need to set up what this looks like because if we, um, well, when we first start the game, um, we want this to be displayed exactly how we want it to be displayed. And it should default to this anyway, but it's good practice just to put it in. So on the start of layout, let's go back to the sprite, uh, the sprite bomb. No, that's, we're going to leave that the same. Where's the bomb? There we go, the icon and we're going to set the opacity to 30%. Um, that's when we start the layer, because obviously we're going to start with zero uh, bombs. Then every tick, this is where we need to start doing some updating. Um, let's say... Uh, no, we don't need to put it in every tick. Let's do... Let's go down to collectibles. Let's put it down here. Let's do a system... Um, variable comparison. So we're going to say system compare variable bombs. If bombs is greater than or equal to one, so we've got one or more bombs, then we're going to change the opacity of the bomb icon. So we're going to go bomb icon, set opacity to 100%. And then we can simply just do an else statement because there's only two things that are going to happen. We're either going to have bombs or we're not going to have bombs. So if you click on the little end bit here, highlight the whole bit, push X on the keyboard, shortcut to get else, and then we can just copy this down and just say set opacity to 30%. So that way, if we play the game, starts at 30%, got a bomb, one, two. If we drop the bombs, goes back to 30%. Love it. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Are you happy with that? You should be happy with that. I think that looks fantastic. Um, what else can we add into the HUD element? We've got the score, which is the coin count. I might change that from score to coins and then do this again for how many coins we've collected. That could be that could be good. Or are we just looking for things to add? Um, and I've gone and called it bomb frame, so I might just call it frame. If we're going to use it more than once, why not? hold down control or command when you've got the frame selected and you can just drag out a copy which looks fantastic um, and then we're going to use the well, let's get rid of that spend so much time aligning all of that um, I'm going to call this count frame because it's counting bombs and it's counting um, coins put that back in the middle there make sure we get snap the grid back on so we can align everything perfectly. It's eight, eight by eight. I turn snapping off just to nudge this thing over to within one pixel. There we go. 
there we go and then I'm gonna put the coins which I already changed I'm gonna change it back to just say score so much back and forth what a terrible episode this is change the size to what was it four did, it, did I say four it was it was four center justification on the horizontal and vertical alignment shrink that box down right click it Z order center the top pop it in the middle there now we need a coin we need a coin that's not going to rotate so we need to just drag out we just need to create a clone of this so right click it clone it and then pop it up over here and you guessed it we're going to call it coin icon great now it's got behaviors we don't want it to sign we don't want it to be moving up and down and we don't want the animation because it's going to sit there so we can just go ahead and delete all these frames leave it at one frame you don't need to worry about changing any of that because it's only got one frame so it can loop all day long and nobody's going to know um, and now we need to pop that in the middle of the square so turn snapping back on grab the coin pop it in the middle there is that too small do we need to make a bigger coin yeah we need to give it a white outline as well so it's matching um, and also we can make it bigger we didn't even need to clone it we could have literally just made a new sprite um, let's go let's make it 12 by in fact how big did I make this one 16 by 16 so why not let's go 16 by 16 let's keep it consistent consistency is important in game making because people spot inconsistencies if you don't notice something it means you've got it right but if something's inconsistent then there's a good chance someone's going to notice uh, right I do want these colors though so I'm going to copy that color and I'm going to copy that color and then we're going to probably guess what that color is go white oh I've just I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go back and get them it's fine um, now let's make that coin so we're gonna go across the top and then one two three one two three and then down at the bottom I'm gonna work that out in a minute I'm just gonna make this exactly the same along at the bottom yeah and then one two three one two three and then bring that down to there bring that down to there we've got the base color for the coin oh oh flood turn flood on flood fill color the middle close it much better go into this coin double click it get your eyedropper get the shade get get the highlight get out come back and let's shade and highlight let's highlight the top and let's shade the bottom where did I put the shading on this one I did all the bottom and the left and then the top and the right but we're probably going to need to do a couple of layers there left one off at the top there so it's, it looks a little bit more natural with the curve let's go down to there that looks nice quite like that although it's looking a bit beveled but then these were as well anyway um, let's do that bear with me maybe I'm trying to be too arty but I quite like it you might not you can do a better one do a better one I'm gonna stick with that or am I it just looks beveled along the bottom there I think maybe just one no I'm, I'm not gonna just mess around with it I'm gonna stick with it we can touch it up at the end change the opacity to 30 it's called a it's called a coin icon let's go back on the start of layout coin icon set the opacity to 30 and then we come down here on the collectibles and we're going to just do another 
uh, condition exactly the same as what we've just done here. So add a event. We're going to do a system compare, and we're going to go score, which is coins, is greater or equal than one, then the coin icon is going to be 100% opacity. Otherwise, else, X on the keyboard, once you've highlighted it, drag down a copy, the opacity is going to be 30. So it's only really going to be 30 at the beginning of each level. And then as soon as we start collecting coins, it's going to fill in and then count. Count the coins. One, two. I love it already. Bomb. One, two. Now we've got a little bit of an inventory system going on up here. I'm still, I don't know. I mean, I may change this. I'm going to have a play around with it off camera. And if I find a better way of doing it that I like, oh, then I'm going to... I can't stop playing my own game. I love it. Shoot me. You can't see me. Right, okay. Um, is that everything we need to do in the HUD? Have I messed around too much? Is this overly yappy? Does it need to be any longer, this episode? Or can we leave it there? I don't know. Maybe... We'll put something else up there. At the moment, there's nothing really in the game that can be displayed, so I'm not really going to mess around with it. We could do a score, which is basically you get points for collecting stuff, you get points for killing things. You could get uh, a score multiplier by finishing the level without taking any damage. We can add that in in terms of variables later. That's not a big deal. But for now, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Let me know if there's anything else you want to add. But as far as the head goes, we might need to put a frame on it at some point, but maybe a white frame. But I'm going to leave it for this episode. We can do that and kind of like finishing touches later on. But for me, that works. It tells us exactly what we need. We've got a timer there. We might need to do a little icon for the timer at some point, but a future episode perhaps. Um, that's all done now. Thanks for sticking around. It was overly yappy on my part. Um, I'll little bit, be a little bit more concise and to the point moving forward. Uh, if you made it this far, um, thanks for sticking around and uh, I'll see you in the next one.